Hi friends, it's Deanna here and today we are going to be working on the pillowcase cover uh, well the pillow cover, pillowcase, pillow cover that's what it is <laughs> pillowcase cover, I think I'm saying uh, two things pillowcase cover, it's already kind of we're covering the pillowcase alright, you don't care about all that we're making the pillow cover and I am super excited about this because it's so cute you can use all kinds of different uh, woven fabric so that you can add um, your own little touch um, I know that pillowcases can get a little bit pricey sometimes so being able to make your own is fantastic um, so let's <laughs> first thing we're going to do so here's my middle piece this is my front middle piece um, it's one piece all together and this is my back middle pieces there's two because we're gonna have the opening in the back and here's my side pieces so we're gonna start by uh, attaching those side pieces to that middle piece make sure that if you have a directional pattern piece uh, I mean a directional uh, fabric piece that you're paying attention to the direction of the fabric if you're matching if it's a directional side and a directional middle that way you put them together the right way you don't want one upside down maybe you do and if you do go ahead for it but um, <laughs> if you don't then make sure you you check that out we're gonna grab this is my panel my middle panel I'm putting it side up on my board and I'm gonna grab my side panel and I'm put it right on top at that raw edge and we're going to pin and get it ready to sew now because this is a woven um, pattern we will do a 3 8 seam allowance and what we will do is we'll go ahead and sew it with the sewing machine first and then I will go back and sew the edges with my serger that way um, it keeps it encased and that way when if you pull at it if, if, a, if it's a fluff pillow and it's a little bit tight the seams don't come apart as you wash them and you do all these things because you know woven fabrics and they fray um, so we want to make sure with that so we're doing one side and then we're doing the same to the other side as well for the this is for the um, for the front one which is a solid piece in the middle now for our back pieces again if you're using a uh, fabric that is directional you want to look and make sure that you've got it right mine goes uh, I think you can yeah you can make it go either way because want some are going one way some are going the other way so it's not basically a directional pattern pattern but now this is the back piece which is set in two let me steam these wrinkles out and what we're gonna do is so here's my middle piece let's say I, this is where I want to match them up right here to be my middle piece I'm just looking to see to make sure that, that is what I want let me see maybe it's the other side is what I want yes okay so this will be my middle piece right here where I'm going to fit in my pillow. So these are my outer edges, outer edge, outer edge. We're going to go ahead and place these outers right on those outer edges, right sides together. And then I'm going to go over and sew them just the same for both. All right, to finish those uh, edges, you can either go back and do a zigzag stitch at those edges or you can go ahead and go to your serger, which is what I'm going to do. Once we have sewn all those together, we're gonna go ahead and open it up and we'll steam that seam allowance away. And then we can go back and top stitch that seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and steam all of them down and sew and give it a little top stitch right there. And that will just make it look so finished. These are going to be so super cute. All right, now that my edges are all sewn on, this is my front. I'm going to put that aside. I'm gonna grab my back where all where my both my sides are and I'm gonna grab where my inside this is my inside one this is where my buttons are gonna go these are my outer edges 
we're gonna grab that inside we're gonna place our interfacing right at that edge well I say right at that edge but I mean is a quarter inch away from that edge and my uh, interfacing wasn't long enough so that's why you see two little pieces of interfacing but I mean um, I'm just attaching the interfacing how your manufacturers um, thing says to do it and then once that's attached I'm gonna grab that quarter inch that is left over after the interfacing and I'm gonna fold it in towards the interfacing once I'm done with that then I'm gonna fold where that crease is I'm gonna fold it over to create um, this placket right here where we're gonna attach our buttons or snaps whatever you want to use to close your uh, pillowcase and then we're going to do the same for both because then we're after we're going to go over to our sewing machine and i'm going to sew a quarter inch from the from the folded edge so right here i'm going to sew that in to um encase it and to secure it so i'm going to do a top stitch all the way down right here on this edge i'm going to go ahead and do that for both sides All right, let's go sew that up. Once we are done top stitching that, you can use your pattern piece and you can mark those spots where your, your uh, buttons are gonna go. You can make your, attach your buttons, do your button holes, or if you're gonna do snaps, you can go ahead and do snaps. Once that's done, we're gonna grab the two uh, pillowcase uh, backs and we're gonna place them right overlapping each other. So you're gonna overlap that, um, why do I always draw blanks when I'm trying to talk to you all? Well, I'm gonna overlap that placket and um, we're gonna go ahead and sew right here at the ends so that they're basted together and we can treat this back as one piece. I didn't do my snaps yet. Um, I am probably just gonna go ahead and do snaps so I figure I could just do that at the end. It is super, super easy to do it now, especially if you're doing buttonholes, you wanna go ahead and do that now. Since I'm doing snaps, I think you'll be okay for me to do them when I'm done. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, but honestly, it would be a lot easier if you do it now. I just don't have red, red. I don't have red or green snaps and I wanna get some red or green snaps to go with this. Um, I guess I do have white, I could do white. But I'm, I'm wanting, what I want is a red or green or some kind of decorative, which I don't have. So that's why I'm gonna wait on it. But like I said, easier if you do it now. Say hi to Bo, cause he's saying hello to y'all. So let's go ahead and base those edges at the bottom. All right, now if you're doing ruffles, we're gonna grab our ruffles. And we're gonna grab one ruffle at a time and we're gonna place them right sides together and we're going to sew right along that those two sew those two ruffles together once those two ruffles have been sewn together we're gonna open that seam allowance out and steam it and we're gonna do that to all our ruffles to create one continuous long ruffle piece. So let's do that. Once you've sewn all those edges together in one long strip, we're going to go ahead and fold all our fabric in half, wrong sides together all the way and steam. Once you get to the edge, one of the edges I'm gonna turn in a half an inch and steam. Okay, and then now we're gonna go ahead and gather our ruffles. Now, because of how many ruffles you've got, we're gonna gather right at that top raw edge gather both of the um, sides together because of how many ruffles we you've got we recommend that you use a gathering foot um, or some uh, 
you know, uh, your serger settings with for gathering, or if you're gonna do manual gathering, use a thicker kind of thread to prevent uh, breakage. We do have on our uh, YouTube channel, we have a couple of videos on how to gather, and then we also have a video about gathering foot uh, for your sewing machine. So go check those out if you're having, uh, if you don't know how to gather or you want more advice on gathering. I'm gonna go ahead and gather this. Um, and then we're gonna attach it to our pillow and we'll be done. All right, now at that folded edge where you left the fold, make sure you stop your basting stitch or your gathering stitch right before that fold so that way you can open up that fold. I kind of went a little bit over so I'm just gonna pull a couple of stitches off here and that way you can open that up when we go to put it on. We're gonna grab our pillowcase top and we're gonna grab over here our center, bottom center. Um, if you have a it will make a difference if you, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't really probably make much of a difference, but if you have a um, print that has a direction, then th this is, the, I'm just doing the bottom and I'm placing my ruffles right sides together so those raw edges meet at the bottom, raw edge of the ruffle, raw edge of the pillow cover, and I'm gonna start pinning and going all the way around, around the whole pillow. When you get to the edge, you're going to grab that raw edge of your ruffle and tuck it into that folded over part of your ruffle that you did. And then you're gonna top stitch that closed. And then we're gonna go around and baste these ruffles. Last clip, wow. <laughs> and baste these ruffles all the way around the whole pillowcase. So let's go ahead and top stitch that seam close where you tucked in your edge of your ruffle and then uh, baste these ruffles down all together. Then we'll grab the back side of the pillow, put it on top, sew it around, and we'll be done. How cute is this? Let's finish it up. All right, friends, we are almost done. Now we're gonna grab our back piece and we're gonna place it right on top. If you have a directional pattern, make sure that you um, match up those directions of your pattern. And then we're going to go ahead and put it right on top. We're gonna sew all the way around, encasing those ruffles in there. So we're sandwiching those ruffles in there. Uh, match up those seams. And then um, once you sew it with your sewing machine, then you wanna uh, finish those raw edges just like we finished the raw edges on every all the other sides because once you like are shoving pillows in there and you're washing it and stuff like that and you know woven frays, you don't want your pillow to fray. You want it to last for years to come. So we wanna make sure that those seams are shirred. So um, either you can do your serger or you can do a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine to finish those raw edges. Either way will work. So we're gonna go ahead and sandwich these ruffles in there and we'll be done. We are finished with our beautiful pillow cover. Now, one little bit of advice before, once you have um, basted your ruffles on, before you go to finish your edges, 
turn your pillowcase around and make sure that none of the ruffles were cut weird or the fabric of the pillow was cut weird or anything like that. When I turned my around and checked that, fun fact, one of my sides was kind of folded over and cut a little bit. I was able to just seam rip those little stitches and sew over them again. Um, if I would have done my serger, it might have cut a little bit of the fabric off and my pillow would have been bumped over and not looked very nicely. I mean, it still would have looked nice, but it wouldn't have looked as nice. So just make sure and you go back and check that. So that way when you go to sew, it's nice and smooth and you're just sewing those raw edges and you're not actually sewing your pillow. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn. And all we have to do next is just remove those basting stitches that are poking out and will be done. And this is so gorgeous. It's a great addition, thread. It's a great addition to your, to put on your bed for holiday cheer or make a few for your couch um, or whatever, uh, or just, you know, for your kids bedding or whatever. It is so beautiful. It is gorgeous. And it is nice because on the back it looks great as well. From the front, from the back, you can do some decorative, um, some really cute, um, what do you call them, buttons on the back or anything like that. I also thought it would be really cute to use some like lace or something and put around the edges of the trim if you wanted to do that. Uh, put some around the sides, anything like that. That would be so beautiful and I think it would turn out amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did. Go check out our gathering tutorials um, just so you can easily gather your ruffles. Um, and please come and like, share, subscribe. Come uh, share on our Facebook or Instagram page so you can be inspired by other people and you can inspire other people as well to make beautiful things. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.